All right, up next we've got Max, is it Consinko? Consinko? Consenko? I don't know. I'll let you be the judge. Really cool. Uh, that's me. I'm just going to call you KTO or Kato, Max Kato. Uh, how you doing, man? So this, this right here is really cool. Is this just a substance for the background here? It's really nice, really nice stuff. Uh, so your, your, your role goal, uh, is to be environment and material artist. Hey, I recognize this. <laughs> So you've got a lot of materials in here. Your materials are quite good. This one, hmm, hmm, that looks pretty nice. Ooh, is that water tension I see? Oh boy, really nice color variation in your rocks. So just in general to see if it's well organized and what can be improved. Sorry, I got excited about water tension, <laughs> Melissa. Uh, yeah. So, great balls. Great, great balls. This one's really cool. I just like seeing, like, having, it feels like it's got a logic to it. You know what I mean? Just a bit of water tension. Just a, just a tiny, just a tad, a tad bit of water tension. So you have quite a bit of materials in here. There's a few that are kind of weak. Uh, maybe this one. I think maybe because the contrast of the stone to the, uh, the dirt or sand between is such a difference in value. It kind of feels like unintentional. Like, uh, like just not correct, if that makes sense. Um, oh, that's cool. I'm so easily like, ooh. Ooh, shiny. Looks like cement. Doesn't really come off like cement to me. But I guess, yeah. Yeah, it is cement. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. Oh, yeah, there's cracks in there as well. It's just so weird. Like, you think about this. Um, oh, especially in this view. You see the roughness difference between these is so different. That, like... I just, they don't really feel like they're in the same environment. Because if the, if the concrete's there and it's this cracked, there's going to be so much dust and dirt and sand coming from dirt and the concrete that roughness-wise, these are just going to be quite close to this with maybe some scrape marks showing the exposed like uh, darkness of the stone itself. Yeah, it's very, I mean, you could, you could even leave the roughness like this, but it's the albedo that's so much darker than the concrete that really throws you off. It just feels, it feels strange. But uh, let's, let's keep digging through here. This is cool. This one's interesting. Um, this one's, this one is cool, but it's very flat. It feels very flat, right? And it is, I mean, it is quite flat. It is popping up a little bit, but I really feel like if you if you want it to uh, to really shine, it needs to have that much more depth involved with it. I really like that. I see this in some of your other stuff as well, that you've got this more aged, damaged one. You even say it up here and then the new clean one. It's quite interesting to see you just portraying the two different types. This is nice. It's your roughness, base color. Nice. Yeah, base color looks pretty good. Red might be a little too saturated for PBR. Metalness, nice. That's good. Normal, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's just, it's lacking in like, maybe it's tiling too much, so you're not really seeing that depth or the or the uh, the displacement happening very much. I like this one. Um. Well, this one's intriguing. That's cool. 
it's simple, but it, you know, it does the, does the job. And the, the, I know everyone really wants to offset their stone work. So just so it's got a little bit more character to it, be super careful with like going too far with that. Cause then it just looks uh, stylized or unintentional now, on, in this shot. It doesn't look as intense as in this one. So this one, it's okay. Hmm. Hmm. Ooh, I like this one. Simple, but effective. Interesting. Very, very nice. Cool. So yeah, I mean, all of your materials look pretty good. It's just a matter of like pushing them further, right? These three right here, holy spicy, man. These are, like that looks for reals, for reals. Really, really, really? Dude, this is crazy. This looks freaking awesome. Dang, dude. Oh, that's so cool. Yo, what? Oh, that's so sick. Yeah, this one's really, really nice. Uh, is this your, is your roughness is here? You got your metal here. So I imagine the metal, these little metal lock things are have like a different roughness to them. Really, really sick looking. Um, it's, it's not only like, I mean, the, the shapes and the details that you're doing aren't like crazy it's 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 the roughness and the way you got the albedo to read right those are really what's making it shine uh the height looks really good but it's that roughness and albedo that are really making it look good so be be super proud of that material this one also looks pretty nice i remember this yeah super cool Nice. Again with the aged dude, man, what's up? Oh, this looks, this looks really good. Is this, oh yeah. Albedo only. So this is a little odd. We're just doing the albedo only in the clay close up. Dang. Oh, what is happening? Uh, my eyeballs. <laughs> you, you definitely don't need that last image in there. Um, this looks really good too. You know, these types of materials or just material creation in general, really, really think about uh, sampling off of uh, photogrammetry for color selection, right? Those are gonna be tuned. This is like, man, this looks nice. It's so overgrown, but you can still tell like what it is. That's super saturated. Wait, what? Huh. This looks really nice though. Really, really good. Okay. So you're you're doing environment art. You've got your meat mat piece here. How old is this one? So this is a year ago. This one's actually I would say without trying to sound very rude or anything, just upfront, very, it's so difficult for me to say it like this, very amateur in the, like the way that you've constructed the scene. Uh, just because it looks like there's not really a thought into the design for how the space is supposed to hold up or like an, um, an understanding of like what happens when materials become too noisy. There's nowhere for my eye to rest and the, the focal point I can tell is supposed to be here, but it's kind of lost throughout. And it doesn't really feel like there's any lighting other than I see this, the light stencil on the ground here and the what's coming through the window here. It just doesn't feel like it's dark enough to explain why it's so it's, it's just, it's very unlit. It doesn't feel dark enough in that sense, like this space should be being filled by ambient lighting, right? And it looks like 
I mean, it looks like a lot of your asset. Ooh, that's nice. A lot of your asset creation is quite. Um, is it? It's quite good when you're when you're looking at this stuff, and you're not. It doesn't look like you're exercising your knowledge of your materials here in these. If that makes sense. So this is a year ago. When was this one? Nine months ago. Okay. So with the understanding that you have of uh, albedo, you know, roughness, metallic, the PBR maps, um, it doesn't look like it's going into your environments currently. And I mean, this, this is older, right? Because like, if you look at this one, for example, this is quite, it's quite shiny. It's arguably more reflective than I would imagine that type of material to be. And then maybe the color is, is maybe too saturated. It's quite, it's just quite busy. This, this asset's not bad. So there's a little low poly up here. But yeah, these, these feel like miles away from the quality that you're getting with this stuff. Like even, even down here, like these look phenomenal. And I think once you take your material understanding and bring it into your environments, you're going to be in a much better spot. Let me just check out this warehouse and we'll, we'll move on. Yeah, this one's also kind of suffering from like not, the ambient is just so bright that it almost doesn't look lit. This one, this shot's not too bad. But it's, it's understanding how the ceiling is like integrated into the rest of the scene, like where support beams are and, and whatnot, and like where these windows are at, how the windows are built into the frame of the, of the brick, and understanding where, like because I can see you're, you're lining up your grout so that it ends where the windows uh, would start, right? But yeah, it's definitely, you're just, it's just very bright. Let me see if I can just. I'm lowering the saturation down just a little bit because when you darken it up like that, saturation goes up. I mean, you can see here in this shot, wait a minute, what is going on here? What is this? It looks like a, it's a box, but it looks like it's got the wrong material on it. That's interesting. Um, one thing you're not seeing in here, it does, it, right, Olamed? It feels a little odd, it feels off. It feels like the brick materials on it. But one thing you're noticing here is like, there's not really any atmosphere in the air. Like it doesn't feel like I'm, things are getting further away from me other than perspective telling me that. Uh, and then the other, probably even more, more important thing is there's not a lot of roughness variation happening in this. Like having these lockers be a little bit more ref reflective in their material, um, which it, they might be and it's just the angle that we're, we're catching it at, dude. So I'm talking about man is what I'm talking about you get that character in there I love it says Max there I'm curious who that is um but yeah just some stuff to think about it's roughness variation making the space feel a little bit more like naturally lit where the ambient light is illuminating the space like see how dark it is up here uh, let me just, so if I do that you can see it's not as dark up there, but it's just very, overall, it's just very bright. So looking at your ambient, that's my locker. <laughs> Max, Is that, who is that though? That's the question. That's what we got to know. Meet Matt. Hello, Matt. Pretty cool. Oh, I love it with the little reflectors. Oh, that's so cool. Man, this is, so this is really nice. And that background is taking everything from you. I think if that background was a different color, maybe like a blue or something. Let's see here.
You know, the breach is free on uh, Epic. I just got a notification for that. So they just got free advertising out of me. <laughs> You can see what I'm saying, even though I'm like super skilled at this whole masking thing. Just getting something, something back there. Oh yeah, see even like, I'm super down. Whoa. Hey, hey, skills, dude. It's like pro level masking. Just something you can make it just make it pop and get that contrast separated from the background. I'm a sucker for complimentary colors. I'm a sucker for colors, man. <laughs> Anyways, solid portfolio. Definitely take what you've learned from your materials. Start integrating it into the, the assets for your scenes. You're going to be in a much better spot. I actually now that I've seen these, you know, this one, this one even. Some of these other ones in here. There's no reason why your environment shouldn't look like this spicy. I can see it. I can see it happening. It may take a little bit of time, right? Building a scene with that level of quality. Don't build a big scene. Just we'll focus on a door like this, right? Against in you know, a wall. Add all the details you need around it just to support it. And then you're good to go. But yeah, cool. Super cool. All right, let's uh let's look at the next one.